Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem two of the 2015 AP Calculus AB free response questions. All right, let's take a look at the A part of number two. Question two reads, let f and g be functions defined by f of x equals one plus x plus e to the x squared minus two x and g of x equals x to the fourth minus 6.5 x squared plus six x plus two. Let R and S be two regions enclosed by the graphs of F and G shown in the figure above. I put it below. Okay, find the area, the sum of the areas of regions R and S. Now, one thing you want to note when finding the area between two um, vertically oriented curves, as you can see here, they're oriented vertically uh, when we are slicing them to find the area. The function on the bottom must be subtracted from the function on the top. Okay, keep that in mind. So these are the steps we're going to use to solve this problem. We'll first sketch the region. It's highly advised, um, you're highly advised to do that. Um, you orient your slice horizontally or vertically. Write down the formula based on your orientation. I'll go into that later. Uh, label your functions and limits of integration. Set up and evaluate your integral using your calculator. Okay, so to get started, let me show you how to um, enter these functions into the calculator. We have two functions here. We don't have the time to enter them over and over again. So we're going to define them. Okay, so first thing to do, um, let's go ahead and define um, function f. You go to catalog and look for define. Scroll down until you get to define. So there goes define. So we're going to define f of x. f of x as bn 1 plus x plus e to the x to the second power minus 2x. So 1 plus x plus e to the x squared minus 2x. Press enter. Tells you done. Let's make sure we entered it correctly. So f of x is 1 plus x plus e to the x squared minus 2x. Okay, now next thing we're going to do, we're going to define g, okay? So define g of x. So define uh, g of x as what? Define g of x as x to the fourth power. Don't forget your equals, x to the fourth minus 6.5 x squared plus 6x plus 2. Enter. Let's go over it again. Make sure it's correct. x to the fourth minus 6.5 x squared plus 6x plus 2. Excellent. Okay, so um, now which, let's take a look at this situation. We have the two graphs here. Can you guess which is which? This one that looks like a quadratic is actually function f. And this one that keeps, you know, turning here and there is function g, okay? If you're not sure, you can graph them. Now, let me show you how to graph them um, without wasting too much time. Go to your graphing window and then just call up the function. So if you want to graph f, alpha f of uh, f of x, okay, enter. You have it there. Let's see what the graph looks like. And there goes a portion of the graph. Okay, let me zoom it to standard. If you have a standard zoom in window, um, that's what your graph looks like. Zoom six and graph that again. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and graph G. How do you graph G? You just simply go here, and instead of entering this long expression, just enter G of X. That's the beauty of the defining feature of this TI-89. Enter uh, and graph, okay? So you have your fourth degree polynomial right there. So we want to focus in on this area so we can use the zoom box feature to focus in uh, on the uh, region we care about, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's left a little bit. So that's the upper left corner enter and then the lower right corner 
right past the intersection, as we can see here, greater than x equals two, so that's good. And then just come down right beneath the x-axis a little bit. Okay, enter. So we just wanna make it look as much as this, look as close as this as much as possible, all right? Oh, okay, that's a, that's a good window there. There you have it, all right? Now, um, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but we have two intersections. The other intersection we need to find is this one here. So while we're at it, we might as well just find the intersection, okay? So let's look for the intersection. Curve one, curve two, lower bound to the left of the intersection you're looking for, enter. Upper bound to the right of the intersection you're looking for, enter. Uh, there you go, 1.0328, let's write that down. So the x coordinate of our point of intersection, that's all we care about in this problem actually, is 1.038, okay, I messed it up already, 1.0328, okay, 328, 3, and then uh, the y coordinate is 2.4011. It's not useful here, but we just write it down. 2.4011. Okay, now let's go ahead and get started with the problem. So step number one is to sketch the region. We already have a sketch here. Um, if you are doing this, it's highly advised that you sketch it. Again, just make a rough sketch for yourself so you can um, annotate it as much as you want. Now we're going to orient our slices. Since we have two regions, we're going to have two unique slices, okay? So this is our first slice vertically, and this is our second slice, okay? Why aren't we orienting it horizontally? If we do that, notice that you do not have a clean difference here. You're going from G to G, that's a problem, okay? Whenever you're looking for area, you want to try and go from one function to another function uh, for the entire domain. If you have if you have any portion in the domain where you go from one function to itself, then you want to switch your orientation, okay? We're going to switch to vertical orientation because that's the best situation, best approach for this problem. In some problems, it doesn't really matter, but um, in this problem, it does matter, okay? All right, so we have our orientation. Now, next step is to find, um, next step is to find, write down the formula, okay? So let's go ahead and write down the formula. Um, so the area. Now, when you're writing down the formula, it's based on the orientation. Since this is oriented in the direction of the x-axis, guess what? All our variables, variables are gonna be in terms of x, okay? No y's in this formula, so a, Area as a function of x is going to be the integral from x to the left. This slice is going to be sweeping from the left to the right, okay? To x to the right of um, the function on top as a function of x or y. x, remember everything is x, okay? Minus f uh, bottom, function on the top, minus function on the bottom, that represents the sum of all the slices oriented in a vertical orientation, dx. So this is a formula that we're using based on um, our orientation, okay? All right, now, if you notice, we have two regions, all right? Region R and region S, and there's a switch between top and bottom here. So let's go ahead and delineate them so we don't get them confused. We're gonna write them separately. So let's start by um, labeling everything we need for region R, okay? So for region R, we just need X right, X left, X right, F top, F bottom, and then we're good to go. And then region S, the same story. Okay, so for region R, um, let's see, our X left, we're starting from zero to X right, the point of intersection, which is 1.0328, uh, uh, 3. So this is the region one right here. So we're going from here to here, okay? X left to X right. And then on the top is the 
is g of x, okay, and on the bottom is f of x. So let's write that down. Um, so f top as a function of x is equal to um, g of x. And then f bottom as a function of x is f of x. That's for region um, R. Okay, don't forget this one is whipping all around. All right, here. Let's go back, make sure. This one is g of x right here. And then this uh, one, this one that looks kind of like a quadratic is f of x. So in region R, um, f is on the bottom, f of x is on the bottom, and g of x is on the top. Okay, and then for region S, we have a reverse, so g of x is on the bottom, f of x is on the top. So you got to be careful. All right, so there goes that for region R. And then for region S, uh, x left, what is x left here? You're starting from the intersection, 1.03283, to x right. At the end point, was the x coordinate is 2. So you're going from this value to 2. Okay. So x right is 2. What is f top? f top has switched. It's now f of x. Okay. And then f bottom is g of x. Okay. Good. Now we're just going to um, apply these to the formula. We're going to have two integrals and plug it in our calculator, and that will be that. Okay. So the area of regions S plus R is going to be area of region R first, which is the integral from 0 to 1.0328. This variable, you, this number, you can set it to a variable like k, and you can just write keep writing k and store that in your calculator to save time. Um, so function on the top is g of x minus function on the bottom is f of x. So that gives you the area of region um, R. Let's pause this. Okay, change my index to R plus S to be more consistent with the order of our areas here. So that's region R. Region S is an integral from uh, 1.03283 all the way to 2 um, of the switches around, right? So the function on top is f of x, and the function on the bottom is g of x dx. Bam. All right. So all we do is plug this in our calculator, and uh, that will give us our answer. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do. Uh, let's go back home. So the first one is the integral of g of x, d of x minus f of x. Variable of integration is x, and we're going from 0 to 1.0383. We should have saved this number so I don't keep entering it over and over again. So 0, 0, 0.03283. Okay, so this is uh, for region R, uh, and then for region S, the same story integral of, um, it switches around, f of x, so it's f, f of x minus g of x, minus g of x, variable of integration is x, lower limit is the upper limit of the other one, 1.03283. All the way to two. Enter. Okay, so it gives me uh, an an exact result. We need an approximation. So diamond enter. And there goes our answer: two point zero zero four three five. Okay, so our area is uh, area is two point zero zero four. Three. Oh, I forgot already. Four, three, five. Okay, now let's take a look at the B part. It reads region R is the base of a solid whose cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. 
find the volume of the solid. Now, one thing you want to note is that when you're finding volumes of solids with known cross sections, um, always write your functions as a function of the axis that your cross sections are perpendicular to. Okay, so like in this problem, your cross sections are perpendicular to the x axis. What does that mean? It means that everything is going to be a function of x and our limits of integration will be x values also. Okay, so that's a cool trick. Okay, now steps. Sketch the region on a rotated axis. You're given a graph here, but that's not good enough to give you a good visual. I'm going to show you what I mean. Since um, our graph is going to be, our cross sections is uh, perpendicular to the x-axis, we will, we will, what we'll do is we will rotate our x-axis slightly so we can really get a 3D view of our region, okay? So this will be my new coordinate system. There goes my new y, and then there goes my x-axis, okay? So uh, let me attempt to draw region S, not perfectly. So region S looks something like this. That's the, uh, I think, G of X. And then this is the other one. Okay. Let me see, make sure. So the bottom one is F and the top one is G. Good. So this right here is, um, actually, this is G of X. This is G of X. And then the top function is F of X. Okay. So that goes my region rotated slightly. So that's uh, step number one. Let's go over the steps, the remainder of the steps. And then you orient your cross-sectional side. Um, write down your formula based on the orientation. Set up your integral and uh, substitute into your formula and evaluate, okay? So we have the sketch now. Let's um, draw our the cross-sectional side. So it's going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So it's going to look something like this. But what kind of uh, figure are we looking at? They are all squares, okay? So you draw yourself a nice little square, like that, like that, and then like that. So the, the solid that's been created is, a, is basically a collection of infinite number of squares with your bases in between these two curves, okay? So there you have it. Okay, now we have our sketch um, and our side. Now let's go ahead and... Um, <coughs> write down our formula. So what is the formula for the volume of a solid with known cross section? The formula is, let me write this in green. So formula, formula is the integral. Oh, wow, no. <clears throat> formula, we're looking for volume. So let's write volume. Okay, volume as a function of what? Remember, we're perpendicular to the x-axis, so everything is in terms of x, okay? Um, volume as a function of x equals the integral from limits are going to be x values, x on the left to x on the right, okay, of the area of the cross-sectional um, shape, dx. Now, what is a of x in this situation? a of x is basically the area of this square, okay, a of x. So let's say this side is s. We know what the area is going to be. It's going to be s square. Okay, so A of X is basically the area of this of this region. Okay, now um, let's go ahead and uh, um, apply the measures here to this formula. So let's list everything we need first. X from the left is 1.03823. Um, 1 .0 3832 and then x right is 2 oh what is a what is the area a of x a of x is equal to is a square what's the formula for the area of a square side square what is s in this problem s is equal to the top function minus the bottom is f of x minus g of x. Okay, so a is basically f of x minus g of x quantity square. Okay, all right, so <clears throat> we have everything we need. 
Yeah, we do. So let's go ahead and put in a formula, V of X, the volume of the solid with a square cross-sectional area as an integral from 1.03832 all the way to 2 of uh, a, a of X is S square, which is quantity F of X minus G of X square dx. Okay, so we just plug this in our calculator and uh, it'll give us the answer. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have, this is easier to enter compared to the other one, the integral of uh, F minus G, so alpha F of X minus G of X. as a function of x, limits of integration 1.03832, lower limits, upper limit is 2. Okay, I think I made a big mistake here. Mistake is you're supposed to square that, so let's not forget to square that. Okay, so quantity square, close that and press enter. Actually, you press uh, diamond enter for the approximate result. So we can see that the approximate uh, volume is 1.28316 uh, cubic units. All right, so that's that. All right, let's take a look at the part C. Uh, it says, let H be the vertical distance between graphs F and G in region S. Uh, find the rate at which H changes with respect to X when X equals 1.8. And one thing you want to note is that the ch rate of change of a function with respect to x is just another way of saying the derivative. So this is a very easy problem, but the way it's worded, it, a lot of students might get confused. Um, so rate of change is the derivative. So all you're asking you to do here, let's look at the steps, is find the function that models the, the vertical distance between f and g, which is just f minus g then find the derivative of that function and evaluate it at x equals 1.3. End of story, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So our we're looking for this distance here, which is basically the base of that square that we looked at in part B, okay? So that's the vertical distance, vertical distance, all right? What is the vertical distance? Uh, we can subtract the top, which is f, <clears throat> this is F right here, minus the bottom, which is G. You always want to draw your figure over and over again and label it, annotate it as much as possible so you don't make any mistakes. So vertical distance is going to be F minus G. Um, so let's go ahead and write down, let's call it V of X, okay? So vertical distance, um, let vertical distance function be v of x. We're creating a new function, okay? So v of x is equal to f of x minus g of x. So this is the function that we are supposed to create in step one that models the distance between the two functions. Next, we're going to find the derivative of the function v prime of x and evaluate it at 1.3, okay? So um, v prime of x, using the properties of derivatives, is simply the derivative of this entire uh, difference of two functions here. Okay, so what's the derivative of f minus g? It's the derivative of the individual, ooh, of the individual functions. So it's f prime of x minus g prime of x. Remember, you can uh, distribute derivatives across Pro, uh, sums and differences, but you can't distribute derivatives across uh, products and quotients. That's why we have the product and quotient rule. Okay, so that's the derivative there. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to find V prime of 1.3. Okay, V prime of 1.3 is going to be, um, is it 1.3? Let's make sure. I'm sorry, it's 1.8. So V prime of 1.8. I don't know why I put 1.3 there. Okay, so V prime of 1.8. So that's simply going to be F prime of 1.8 minus G prime of 1.8. Okay, so let me show you a really neat trick. 
to do this prop uh, to evaluate this integral right here. So check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative of f minus g, okay? So the derivative of f minus g, so let's do that. Um, f of x, f of x minus g of x. So that's the derivative of f minus g. Variable of differentiation, what we're differentiating with respect to is x. So that gives us a derivative. Now, I want to evaluate the derivative at a particular value. So all you do is use this bar right here for evaluation at x equals 1.8. So have the calculator do the heavy lifting instead of doing the derivatives one by one, just have the calculator do everything for you, okay? All right, and then to get the approximate answer, just press diamond enter, and there you go. Okay, so it did the derivative of f minus g, and then evaluated the answer at x equals 1.8. Your answer is 3.81172. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. So our answer is approximately negative 3.81172. So that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found this um, tutorial beneficial to you, um, please give us a thumbs up. We'll appreciate the positive feedback. Um, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. If you have any questions or comments about this lesson, um, just place a, your comment in the comment section below. More clips can be found on mathcutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.